Praise the Lord, and you're welcome to our Digging Deep, which is our Bible study today. And I pray that as you are joining us, the Lord will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Open Heavens Assembly in Johannesburg in South Africa. And if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to do so. I also want you to like our Facebook page. I can also click this channel to send the video to your loved ones and your friends. Now, the topic for our Digging Deep, which is also a Bible story, is Be Ye Steadfast. Be Ye Steadfast. Let us open together in prayers. In Jesus' name, our Father and our God, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the gift of our lives. We want to thank you for the salvation of our souls. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We want to appreciate you for giving us this opportunity to study at the feet of the Lord. Father, we ask that you feed us with the bread of life. Father, we ask that the word of God will be relevant in our lives and in our situations in the name of Jesus. Thank you for all your children, your sons and daughters that have joined us on this platform today. Father, I pray that you meet us all at the point of our needs. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. If you are just joining us, this is Bible study, and our topic is Be Ye Steadfast. Be Ye Steadfast. I pray that God will make all of us who are steadfast in the name of Jesus. Now, I'll be taking my test from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. I would like you to grab your Bible, and I do hope you have a notebook and a pen to write whatever the Lord will be ministering to you, because I have no doubt in my heart that God will minister much more than what we have time even to take, even on this platform. So open your Bible with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And I pray for all of us that our labor in the Lord will not ever be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, our topic is be ye steadfast. Now, in every fear of life, you will discover that generally, people are in a continuous drive to succeed. Everyone wants to succeed. You are waiting for that encounter that will usher you into a new phase of your life. And in order to get there, you are ready to do what a man can do in order to allow God to do what a man cannot do. So for you to achieve your goal, you need to do something. You need to be steadfast. May the Lord teach us how to be steadfast in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. This is also our month of lifting. It's our month of lifting and I pray that all of us we shall be lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus. Now we are really hoping believing and trusting the Lord for many encounters with the Lord in our lives. Even as we expectantly wait upon the Lord for our numerous blessings, we do have a part to play, to position ourselves for great opportunities in this season. And one of the things that we need to do, that you need to do, that I need to do, is to be steadfast. We need to be steadfast. So what is steadfastness? What is steadfastness? Now to be steadfast is to be immovable, not subject to change, we are resilient. You are firm in your belief. You are firm in your determination. To be steadfast means to be committed, to believe in what you are set to do, and to believe that you can do it. Now, to be steadfast can also mean to have a positive attitude about something, to remain optimistic. Even others, when others do not believe in the viability of your dream, you are so optimistic, you are so positive about the viability of your dream. Do not expect people to believe in you or even your project or your dream when you do not believe in it yourself. That's why 1 Corinthians 50, 58 says, be steadfast. And so my brothers and my sisters, that is what we are focusing on tonight. That is the topic for our Bible study. Be ye steadfast. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 7, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, and our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering, you shall be also of the consolation. Now that scripture is saying essentially that as you have endured and persevered, you also partake of the joy of perseverance. So as you persevere concerning your dream, concerning the realization of your project or whatever it is that you are doing or whatever God has committed into your, into your hands, what the Lord is saying in that scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 7 is, as you have endured and persevered, you also partake of the joy of perseverance. And that is why I know that as we are steadfast in this our month of lifting, the Lord indeed will lift us up in Jesus' name. Now, when we look at our steadfastness, what are the hindrances to steadfastness? What are the things that can confront you and they cannot stand as in 
hindrances to being steadfast. Number one is focusing on your current situation. Focusing on your current situation will not make you to move forward. When you are looking at your situation as a circumstance, that can be an hindrance to moving forward. Another reason is discouragement. One can become so discouraged that you just throw away your dream. You just lose hope. You just become despondent on whatever it is that you are doing. And that can stop you from moving forward. Another reason or another hindrance to steadfastness is negative energy. Negative energy. If you have people around you that are very negative, that is very toxic to your moving forward. So focusing your current situation will be an interest. The scurried man will be an interest. Negative energy will be an interest. And there's so many more. But those are the three that I would like to focus on tonight. Those are three major hindrances to steadfastness. And I want to see all this, these three hindrances in this story that is very profound in the book of Numbers chapter 13, 25 to 33. Numbers chapter 13, 25 to 33. And this is a very interesting story that we all know about Joshua and Caleb. You know the story of Joshua and Caleb in the Bible. Now when you get to Numbers 13, it tells you that was when Moses appointed to have spies to visit the promised land, to bring back a report on what the place is like. Moses was their leader. Lord Moses was like a pastor. Moses was like a like a head of, of the team of a tribe. And he sent them forth to the promise and said, go and spy the land. This is the land that God has promised us. And God says this land is full of milk and honey. Go there and see and bring back a report. God has given them a promise. And God said, it is a promised land. I am going to take you there. So that promise did not come from a man. That promise did not even come from Moses. That promise came from God. And before they went there, Moses sent 12 of them and said, go and spy the land, go and set the land, go and do like a diligence upon the land and come back and tell us, you know, how the land is, how the place is. Now let's read the scriptures to hear the report. That is Numbers 13, 25 to 3. And they told him and said, we came unto a land whither thou sendest us, and surely he fled with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the city are word and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Hanak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Atite, and the Jebusite, and the Hamorite dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanite dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to possess it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that heated up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it, they are men of a great stature. And then we saw the giant, the sons of the Anak, which kept of the giant, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. That was the testimony they gave. They say we were in their own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. So if you look at this scripture and the, and the, the story, the account, you know, that we are read in Numbers 13, 25 to 33, you will see that 12 men, able men were sent to search the land. And out of the people that were sent, 10 of them focused on their current situation. So those, those 10 people, they saw the men of, of, of the Canaanite, they saw the men of the Anna as giant. They said, well, like grasshopper in our own sight. Even the sight of a giant, well, like grasshopper. He said that the land that we are going to set is the land that eat up its inhabitants. Literally saying that if we go there and start occupying the land, the land is going to eat us up anyway. So 10 people focused on the recurrent situation. 10 people were discouraged. That was a report of discouragement. That was a report that could discourage even the bravest of all men. Ten people were discouraged and ten people were affected by negative energy from other spies around them. So each one transferred negative energy. Of the ten people, each one of them said the same thing. We were not able. We are not able. We are not able. Our current situation is bad. We are discouraged. The negative energy was transmitted, you know, amongst them. But only two people, Caleb and Joshua, were steadfast. They were unmovable by what they saw. They refused to be discouraged. They did not allow negative energy of the other ten spies to flatten their drive. 
Those two, Caleb and Joshua, they were resolute. They were going to succeed by God's help. Remember that it was God that gave them the promise that they should possess the land. So it was not a matter or an issue that depended on their abilities or their capabilities. Everything depended on the ability of God. Now, what is the result of steadfastness? By being steadfast, Joshua and Caleb positioned themselves for a great harvest. They positioned themselves for a great harvest. That is why I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, in the Bible study of today, do not focus on your current situation. Do not allow discouragement to set in. Be strengthened. Look at God who has given you that promise. And get rid of people and things that will transmit negative energy into your life. Look at the life of Joshua and Quillet. Their dreams became a reality. That is one great result from steadfast. And when you are steadfast, you will realize your dream. Your dream will become a reality. Number two, their lives became a reference point even till today. Even today we are sharing the story of Joshua and Caleb. Why? Because they have become a reference point. These two have become a source of encouragement to us. They are telling us we can rely on God. They are telling us that God is dependable. They are telling us that we can hold God at his word and God will come through for us. It was not as if they believed in themselves, but they believed in God that gave the promise. So my brothers and sisters, as we are talking about steadfastness today, I do not want you to look at your current situation. I do not want you to look and assess the situation and say, I cannot. Look at the one that has given you the promise. He's the God Almighty. He will come through for you. And thirdly, their strength in God was strengthened. So number one, their dream became a reality. Number two, they became a reference point up until today. Even their faith in God was strengthened. Now, if you look at Numbers chapter 32, 11 to 12, Numbers 32, 11 to 12, only Joshua and Caleb were saved from the wrath of God. In fact, the scripture says, those 10 spies and others who doubted God, they all died without entering the promised land. And I pray that you will not die before you get to your promised land in the mighty name of Jesus. In fact, in this season of lifting, I want you to reach for your goals. I want you to be optimistic about your progress. I don't want you to resign yourself to faith. Believe what the Lord has said. We are talking about steadfastness. We say, be ye steadfast child of God. Be ye steadfast son of God. Be ye steadfast daughter of God. Now, when we talk about the result of steadfastness, were they giant in the land that was fight? Yes. Did they find the children of the Anna there? Yes. Were they giant in that land? Yes. Were there going to be some challenges in taking on the giant? Of course, yes. But is anything difficult or impossible for God to do? The answer is no. Joshua and Caleb understood who their ally was, the almighty God. He can do all things. Now with God, nothing shall be impossible. That is what the scripture says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew 19, verse 26. It says, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Not few things, not mostly things, but all things are possible. He said, with men, this may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So in this season of lifting, as I conclude tonight, I want to encourage you to be steadfast. I want you to aim for the best. I want you to put your best foot forward. Pray, then seek for God's leading and step out. Put your best foot forward. After you have prayed, after you have sought for God's counsel, what next you need to do? Step out and be steadfast. And God will meet you at the point of your need. Now, we look forward to hearing your testimonies. I want you to be like Joshua. I want you to be like Caleb. I want you to make God your strong ally. Because one with God is a majority. Take on the giant in the name of Almighty God. And I know that victory is yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Now tonight, I would like us to share a few words of prayer together. And our first prayer is to pray that God will make you to be steadfast. That God will make you to be unmovable like Joshua and Caleb. I want you to pray that God will, will give you what it takes to be a winner and not a quitter. Shall we pray? I want you to pray that God make me to be a staff as O oh Lord. Make me to be unmovable, O oh God. Make me like Joshua and Caleb. Let me exhibit the kind of spirit that they have. I want you to pray that God will give you what it takes to be a winner. Remember, winners do not quit and quitters do not win. I am not going to be a quitter. I am a winner. Father, give me the grace to hold on. Give me the grace to be resolute. Give me the grace.
grace to be steadfast. Give me grace to be unmovable. That you will not look at your situation. You will not look at the situation and be discouraged. But you believe the Lord that has promised you. That God will come through for you. Father, we thank you. We pray that we will make us winners and not quitters. You give us the kind of faith and spirit, oh God. That Caleb and Joshua exhibited. That will be able to hold on. To exhibit that kind of faith. And our dream will become a reality. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Now we're going to pray again and we'll ask the Lord to make your faith in him to be strong. The kind of faith that I gave to Joshua and Caleb, pray that God will give you that kind of faith, shall we pray. Father, we pray tonight that you'll make our faith in you to be strong. The kind of faith that Joshua and Caleb exhibited, we we're able to have that kind of faith that will not give up. Even at the face, oh God, of, of, of opposition, of hindrances, we will hold on to your word and your promise in our life. We want to be steadfast. Father, we receive the grace to be steadfast in everything that we do. We want to be steadfast in more unmovable in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Beloved brethren, you are going to pray tonight that God will definitely give you the grace to get to your promised land. Shall we pray? Father, we pray that we definitely get to our promised land by your grace, by your enablement, O oh God, by your empowerment in the name of Jesus. Father, take us to our promised land. We pray for grace to be steadfast in the work of God, in our secular work, in our mysterious work, Oh Lord, in the word that you committed into our hands, Lord, we shall be steadfast, we shall be resolute in the name of Jesus. We will not be discouraged, we will not be despondent in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Holy Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. And finally, you are going to thank God for feeding us with the word of life. The word of God says, be steadfast. Thank the Lord for giving you this word. And I want to encourage you that you'll be steadfast in Jesus. And shall we pray? Father, I want to thank you tonight for feeding us with the word of God. We pray that we shall be steadfast. I pray for my brothers and my sisters. They will be steadfast. I pray for myself that I'll be steadfast. That all of us will be steadfast. We will not give up on our goals. We will not give up on our dreams. We will not give up on the opportunity that you are presenting to us. We will not be discouraged, oh God. We will not throw in the towel, oh God. Oh Lord, Father, give us the grace to hold on, to be steadfast in the name of of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all this prayer point that you have given us tonight. We thank you for the word of life. Make us to be like Joshua. Make us to be lost like Caleb. That Lord will hold on to the word of God. We will not give up on you. Give up on ourselves. Jehovah God will believe the word that you have given us. Of the twelve spies, ten came back with an evil report and they were destroyed but two stood by the word of God. Two stood by you, Lord, believing for the word of God. And the Bible said their dream became a reality. They made it to their promised land. Father, take us to our promised land. Make us resolute. Make us steadfast. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not throw in our faith, O God. We will not give up on you, O God. Hold us still. Hold us strong. Make us strong in you. Let us be rooted and grounded in you. Unshakable, unmovable. In the name of Jesus, thank you, dear Heavenly Father. We appreciate you for this word of life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. The Lord bless you. I want to thank you for joining us in the Bible study tonight. The essence of the Word of God is that you take the Word of God and you run with it and that you apply it to your life. The topic for tonight is be steadfast. I want you to take that Word of God, ruminate upon it, act upon it, step out in faith and let the Lord meet you at the point of your needs. The Lord bless you once again. Until I come your way once again, God bless you. Keep safe.